Wild yoga is a practice for us to come into our bodies and our wild nature and also feel ourselves as an extension of the earth's body, that our wild nature and the earth's wild body aren't at all separate, that we're connected always and to, to inspire activism and to just also inspire a more full embodied earth and human view when we're thinking about health and wellness and uh, envisioning the future. It seems like in the culture as it exists right now, there, there, it seems to be missing the sense that our wellness and the wellness of the planet are linked. It seems pretty basic and simple and easy, but it does seem like a lot of the spiritual practices, even activist movements and wellness, personal growth platforms sometimes have the, aren't connected to the idea of what does this mean for the earth and how is this connected to the earth actually becoming more well in our relationship. And so um, if we take a realistic view of how our culture, how the dominant culture anyway, is affecting the earth right now with those systems, then we can see that it's, you know, it's not actually helping things move better for the earth. And then that actually does affect our health. And we can't look at spiritual practices, I don't think, and wellness platforms in a vacuum of just, you know, human focused because they miss a lot. And so we have to include the earth. And so when we include the earth, we have to say, well, what does the earth need to be well? Like, what will it take really, realistically? If, the, if many of the strategies that are happening in the way that systems of power or, or social politics or culture is looking at healing the earth aren't working, what will it really take to bring the earth back into balance and our relationship back in balance? And it seems that to me, part of that is ecological revolution, which means fighting for the wellness of the planet, like we're fighting for our own lives or like we're fighting for the lives of our, our loved ones. In our, in our culture now, yoga is often synonymous with asana, which isn't exactly the same thing as yoga. Asana means the actual physical practice of the poses and postures of yoga. So when people say yoga, they're often referring to like a yoga class and, and the body movements. And that is like one of the limbs, one of the branches on the tree of yoga. It's an, and it's important. It helps bring a lot of body centeredness and body movement and, can, and the postures and movements can open us and change our energy and our states. So it is an important part of yoga, but the larger view of yoga beyond the culture, which has been for eons, is about who we are. It's like a journey to know ourselves and also a journey to know ourselves in relationship to the world. Who am I? And what is, what is the world? And what is my relationship to the world? And also what can I do and be and how can I offer myself while I'm here in the world? So wild yoga takes into account that larger conversation of what yoga is really about. And for me, one of the pieces that often gets forgotten in that thread is the earth like the earth is part of our larger world and so if we remember that how does that shift things i mean the the ancient yogis they didn't necessarily talk about the earth but if you look at a lot of the postures that they were doing they are all named after nature like wild animal poses tree pose and lion pose and dog pose and so it seems like even the ancient yogis on some level were trying to help humans get back into their wild nature their wild bodies and connect to the earth and in wild yoga i'm doing that more more mindfully and i'm also taking the practice into present day time into the particular situation we find ourselves in in the, this culture now in this world now what is our relationship to the earth not thousands of years ago but what is our relationship to the earth now given the culture that we're raised in um, and how can we come into our wild natures from where we are in, in this place and maybe in how we, how we are raised and from where our world is. And then how can we also um, utilize what's coming to us? I mean, a big part of personal journey is giving back. It's, you know, and that's always been the case, even in yoga, it's a practice of service, you know, that I gather and receive and I also serve or offer. Partly our journey envisions us and helps us be response able, like able to respond. So how does what's coming through to us ask us or give us things to step up and be able to respond at this particular time to be who we are, listen for who we are, um, be in relationship with everyone and everything and, and uh, be able to, including the earth and how can we respond? I hope that people 
can realize that they have a wild nature and no matter who you are or how separated you might feel from the earth or your own wild nature that there are practices that can bring you back into balance no matter if there's trauma or what the history is there are practices there's a pathway that can bring you back into balance with your own wild nature um, no matter how separated you feel from the earth um, there's a pathway to get back in connection and like any other pathway it can take diligence and practice and time but it can bring you back into balance and connect you to earth one of the most you know to me, sacred and holy and magnificent connections that there is in this lifetime. Also uh, that we can go on a soul journey and a spirit journey that, you know, we can become soul initiated. That's a lot of the work that I've done with Animus Valley Institute, just kind of bringing that piece in that we can have a relationship with our soul, our deep purpose, and that we can live in union also spiritually with the earth, with spirit. And I call it sing our note or play our part in the symphony to you know be conscious of our contribution and also um the song uh, the music that's happening all around us and where our part is in that even when the music is dissonant even when there is um, um harm happening to be able to enter that conversation and, and contribute and take in what what's going on and um also really big is that the journey that we're on the spiritual journey the personal growth journey the activist journey is to contribute to the earth, which means in the end, we look at how is this, how is, how is what we're bringing back? Where is it meeting the situation of where the earth is right now and where our culture is? And if we are about cultural change or transformation, you know, how is, how are we bringing that, that piece back? And everybody's in a different place in the journey. So sometimes it's just taking the time it takes to reconnect with earth, to reconnect with our bodies just taking the time it takes to vision with soul and uh, and receive and also having the courage when it's time and when you know when it's clear to step in and really take action and make an offering into the world like make a difference being willing to uh, vision not only for ourselves but for the world being able to dream not only for ourselves but also for our communities in the earth and being able to to step into the idea of what it is to be a love warrior in these times and and make a difference for the earth now and for future generations mm -hmm.